Hello and welcome to this video on spiritual divination. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about using tarot and oracle cards for shadow work. Um, so thanks so much for joining me. Um, clearly, if you're watching this video, you're interested in, in either shadow work or tarot, uh, or both. And if you are new to my channel and new to the topic of spiritual divination, I've done a couple of videos on it. I'll link them below in this video. Um, you can check them out if you haven't watched them already. And I go into a bit more about um, like a definition of what I think spiritual divination is and uh, like laying the foundations for it and a bit about um, sort of what it's not, kind of, I guess, I would say. Um, for this video specifically, I'm going to be just kind of jumping right in and talking about how and why um, and some good ways to use tarot and um, or oracle cards for shadow work. So I am a huge fan of um, introspection, working through problems, philosophy, you know, um, rumination, I guess. I love information and knowledge um, and different perspectives, I guess. They intrigue me. And so tarot has always been something that has provided great gateways and new doors um, to different perspectives always, right? And being able to see uh, the possibilities and um, infinite workings of templates, right? Because that's the beauty of kind of the world, the universe that we're in right now, um, and tarot is a mirror of that, right? Um, this growth pattern, cyclic, sequential flow that kind of guides um, organic growth and movement, it's, you know, through time. You see it everywhere. Um, seasons, the tides, day and night. Um, You know, we could go on and on on this. And this is what is, you know, um, the contrast um, and comparisons is what brings me to the topic of duality, right? Um, and in my Comprehending Consciousness series, uh, moving into episode uh, six, and it's going to be about duality. And so it's really um, casting a nice filter over my work with divination right now and so I thought that I would kind of incorporate that theme and the, um, the knowledge that I have in the working uh, for tarot and talk about how we can combine it with shadow work really beautifully and got, um, gain so much um, different perspectives and insights that can really be a guiding light to help make hard and difficult work, more purposeful, me meaningful, um, you know, it's not to mitigate or um, block out or fight against the dark, the shadows, your problems, your faults, oops, um, your insecurities, whatever it is, right? Um, that's really not the approach that comes with shadow work. It's more of a revealing, an assessment, um, acceptment, the undertaking of commitment to do work for bettering yourself and for moving through hard things, right? Um, for uh, that soul evolution, <laughs> for gaining better insight, a broader awareness of consciousness, right? To make better decisions in the future. And so, um, the concept when I'm talking about spiritual divination and when I go into readings for shadow work, having this 
um, working space of duality and knowing what I'm going into and working within is is super helpful and so I want to describe just a little bit about that for people who might be new um, to this kind of framework and um, open up just the possibilities here with um, how to view our classic duality good versus evil dark versus light now first and foremost when we talk about duality in that structuring in the, say yin yang sign um, I'll give the quick example which I give all the time so if you see my other videos you're probably sick of it already but the dark and the light and the halves that are all encompassing each other and working through each other all the time we sometimes forget and really need to always remember they're encompassed in this great circle and the circle is the representation of the whole which is source and oneness and the observer the absolute controller right um, the one <laughs> you know and that's, that's all there is to it you cannot grasp any higher in this consciousness levelness of what that even means you can drive yourself crazy trying to many people do many people spend their whole lives ruminating on just what the circle is who it is what it could be um, and I and I've done it myself and I'm not talking down to anybody because you know um, you can check out my creator mindset. I write all about it. I've done blogs and podcasts all about it and trying to encompass that, be the circle and see the whole and understand that the light and the dark, the good and the bad are inside of us at all times and they're working and it's a finding of harmony and balancing those that's an energy alchemizing thing that's the whole thing we're here for. That's what our bodies do. If you look at them scientifically, you just want to look at the logical analytical frameworks and evidence right um, it's very clear of the energy torus around all of us um, the EKGs the EEGs all of these electromagnetic things that we use um, to measure functions that are going on with our health and our bodies and our stress levels and you know our energetic body we totally discard it like it has nothing to do with health and wellness um, when it is part of the whole and it, you know and now I'm on a holistic thing. Um, so let's keep to the point here, <laughs> which in this spectrum of dark and light, when we're talking about tarot and going into readings for shadow work, um, especially when we are opening up our energetic space, our bodies, our minds, and offering um, a place of communion with spirit source, card energy, saints, angels, um, tarot, the archetypes, you know, higher beings um, of a higher awareness. We're seeking information, right? And when you're creating a space, it's very, very crucial that your foundation is the first thing. You, you have boundaries, you understand the intention that you're going into readings with, that you have um, strong core connection to your energetic alignment, you know, are you positively or negatively focused here? You know, what's your orientation for service? Are you a service to self type? Um, or are you a service to others, right? This is in the spectrum of dark and light, good and bad. We have positive and negative as well. And that's what, um, especially in tarot, it's very important or any kind of divination, any kind of connection um, where you're seeking outside information to compare with your own knowledge, having that truth point inside yourself first is is the base thing. And so, um, especially with shadow work, that's what we're working to hone and tone and listen to and find and, and learn more to about it. And, you know, it's a forever growing thing. So don't seek confidence and confirmation and like dead set, I'm going to know something. It doesn't really work like that. It's a real, uh, you have to feel your way through it. You know, everybody is so individual and unique and your specific vibration is just you. And so you have to really find your own current in there always. Um, but this is guiding. This is things and tools, right? Divination is tools and duality is a comparison. It is a measurement system that we, the observers, can use, right? To make better conscious decisions, to view information more accurately with clarity, with greater awareness, right? A bigger scope. That's all duality really is. And when you can step back, and especially during tarot, you can stand as just the reader and hold space for truth that can come in. 
and filter it because this is the thing with the reader that we have to remember is we are the filter of the information. We are going to cast our orientation, our service alignment. We interpret information through it. It's your personal filter for how you interpret 365, 24-7, energetic information, verbiage, all of it. Um, all information that comes through you and out to the ether, right, at all times is um, intention-based. And you can't lie your way through it. And either you're, you're positively oriented more or you're more negatively oriented, you know, and it's not good or bad. So step back and be the observer again, right? Um, we have it all inside of us and we're balancing. So it's, it's more of, it, that's why I call it an alignment because you can change and move and it's a gradual thing or polarity, the energy collection, you know, an energetic cloud. You can look at it as a harnessing, a polarity um, of an energetic cloud around yourself or um, magnetic field, you know, of an attraction kind of positive, negative. These things are, they're words, they're, they're just descriptions. <laughs> so choose to be more fluid in how you describe things and more structured in finding patterns and comparing things than worrying about the words that you use, right? It's the underlying truths that we're seeking here, not really like the blabbing, did we, do we have the words that match each other, kind of. Um, and so that's another huge thing about interpreting the cards, right? You know, everybody, that's why when you work with readers or you're reading for someone, understanding where they come from and knowing them a bit is super helpful because then you have an idea of how to gauge that information that they're portraying out to you and compare them with your own knowledge for the cards right and what the cards you think the cards are saying to you and so when we're setting up um, our space I'm gonna give a little bit of working comparisons of what um, we're talking about when we're talking about dark versus light positive orientation versus negative orientation um, and I, I, I have this on one of my boxes where I have my um, Aquarian deck in here as like a constant reminder when I go to do readings and when I think, you know, about doing thing, readings for myself or cleansing my cards or whatever, I can look at this and I'll share it. I have a PDF form of it because it's probably hard to read on here. Um, but I'll put it in a link or share it on Telegram if I put this on Telegram. But anyways... It's about how to identify intention, right? And we have on the dark side, the Luciferian side, restriction, condemning, self-serving, inorganic, confined, oppressive, negative emotions like fear, shame, and hate. And on the light side, we have source space, accepting, forgiving, reciprocity, organic, free, sovereign positive emotions like love and gratitude and so <clears throat> every time that I go to open the box and um, you know do a reading I am aligning myself and reminding myself of the, the guidance the alignment to keep my uh, true north focused right because as we do more shadow work and as we grow as individuals you know we really realize that it's never a clearing out of darkness when you when you're getting ascending, becoming more light or whatever, becoming a better person, um, being better and good, more good. You know, um, it's not that there's just all light and the darkness doesn't come in. There is equa equality in, in, in energetics, and so the lighter that you get, the stronger of the darkness is is called to you. But the stronger you are and the brighter you are, right? And um, the greater the working becomes and the balancing becomes. But you can take more because you're stronger. And so it's, um, it's very important to remember that and to not give in and give up and think, oh, you've reached some kind of lightness and I'm done. And I don't need to look back at my quote-unquote shadow area anymore. Like, that's over. Um, I just think that's a great reminder. And also as another great reminder on here, I have like a little fortune cookie that I got. And I love it because it says, all the darkness in the world cannot put out a single candle. And, um, and that always reminds me in my path, because I feel 
a lot like that sometimes, you know, tiny flame and darkness, and um, that in itself is can be a great motivator and a great vision for me to keep myself going, right? Um, and so now that I brought in a little bit about what I'm talking about, about duality and dark versus light, and why it's important to know um, some guidelines and some fl red flags for each side, right, or guide points for each side, whatever, um, I want to talk just a bit about tarot specifically readings and shadow work and um, what kind of intention we're going into them with. So when you're really going to go into shadow work divination, I personally really love to have a good spread and to have a good deck that is acquainted and um, flavored um, to the problem at hand because we we face lots of different problems and so having clear outlines of what the problem is can really help to um, get the most out of our reading right because if you go into it just pulling cards and just laying some down it yeah it's great it can be totally work for you and it can provide guidance I'm not saying anything bad about it and you know I do that myself sometimes and I have done it and I get plenty out of readers who've done that too you know everybody's style is different but specifically for shadow work right it's intentional it's for a purpose you know people sometimes um, maybe think it's something it's not or something you know you only do at meditation time or maybe something you go to therapy specifically for or you do hypnosis for you know that was kind of my um, preconceived ideas of it years ago maybe when I first started to think about and hear the word shadow work but um it really it's it's so general right so having more defined avenues to guide into is super helpful and especially with tarot where it's a lot of generalities and archetypes and um, structuring kind of patterns in a theme you know um, having a spread to allow the cards to seek a very specific, or not very, well, a more specific um, definition within their meaning is very helpful because just like you, like think of how you are as a person and the kind of like maybe a stereotype that you could represent, right? Um, and even within that stereotype, it's multifaceted and it's in impressed upon, you know, or influenced, that's what I was kind of looking for, can be influenced by other um, situations or when we're put into, you know, different circumstances with other, like, um, influences, then you, you can have a slightly different appearance and tarot's no different. And when we have that spread that says, you know, this card means this, this card means this, it helps the reader to be as um, that clear observer, right, as much as possible to step out of their own personal bias. Because as readers, we all have biases towards cards. We have our preconceived thing of what we get as cards. And sometimes that's great. And intuitive reading or even knowing your meanings, just memorization, however you choose to know meanings, you know, is wonderful. I'm not negating anything of that at all. What I'm saying is that when we have that great knowledge base of a card meaning and then we can set it into a setting at a specific point and, and it speaks more, right? It's like, okay, we have a book and now we have the page number that we really need to get into and read at that page number. It, it just sets like cl clarity to me. I have like a couple of great spreads that I really like to use for shadow work too. Um, I'll probably, I'll put a link in below. I think I might write a quick blog about them just because that's more of a visual thing to look at, um, which might be more helpful to view as a blog. So if I do, I'll come back to and edit that in and put it in there too, so I'll have a link for that. Um, 
But yeah, so once you know your intention, you know what kind of issue you're going to do work for, you know, you know what kind of trigger or emotional thing that you need to be working through for shadow work or getting in touch with or, you know, looking for guidance on. And you pick a good spread that can really, is meant to really funnel that type of information or dig into the kind of the, the root of the issue, whatever the case is, right? The last thing that is or should be of uh, great concern is understanding um, your personal use for why you're going into the reading, right? Um, and this is at the time of the reading. So the other things like set up beforehand, <coughs> excuse me, you know, especially if you're doing a reading for somebody else and go through the spreads first and have them choose one that, that resonates with them um, beforehand, right? Or at the time, but, but when you're, ready to do the reading, you have the cards out and stuff, right? This energetic orientation, your polarity cloud or whatever, your vibe, your frequency you're putting out at that moment while we're asking, while we're doing the connection, sitting for the cards, the ceremony part of it, right? Um, having clear orientation and alignment at that point is um, really important. Because if you go into it in just focused on the problem of whatever the, the shadow issue is and you're into the negative vibe of it, into the, the pain of it, the, the, the crux of the problem, the reason that's really bothering to you, then um, the cards are just going to repeat that back to you, really. They're going to say, oh, we see your problem this way in this card. And now, oh, it fits into this setting in this way. You can learn from it in this way, too. And, oh, don't forget, also, this other person was affected by it in this way, you know. So it's going to help you just see the problem itself from different aspects within that setting of whatever spread that you're using. Because when you're sitting down to ask the cards and you're connecting with them, that's the message you're putting out. If you can switch it, just even a tiny bit, your attitude to a solution seeking, um, instead of focused on what that problem is, you could seek to, how can I heal this? How can I feel better about this? How can I move through? Um, focus on seeing a silver lining. Even if you don't, don't try to envision, and, excuse me, envision what exactly it's going to be. Don't get caught up in that. Um, but just that there is one. That hope feeling that there is one, um, that intention, the orientation of that vibration, that um, actual openness of seeking a true answer and knowing it's going to be given to you is the space that you need to be in when you're sitting down to do the reading. Um, and the other person as well. So if you're doing a reading for somebody else, it's important to try to briefly get them in that space. Even if don't, if they're at that level where you can explain to them the working, go for it. But if they're not, just ask them a quick questions about the problem that can turn their perception a bit, you know? And that can be really helpful. Like when you ask them, okay, well, what's, what would you like? What's the problem? And they focus on, oh, well, I really don't like the job that I'm in right now. Um, I just need a better job. Or, um, and if you could just say, oh, okay, what do you love to do? Or if you didn't have to, if money wasn't a concern, what would you be doing? You know, and get them at that space where it's more of a curiosity, an energetic, positive curiosity space. The cards will be way more receptive. And they will offer, um, or they'd be able to offer more insightful messages, you know, they're going to be, oh, solution in this way, in this setting, oh, um, hopeful advice here, and in this setting, you know, see the silver lining in this way. So that alone will really pivot readings, you know, and, and I, if you're a seasoned reader and this is kind of new to you, I highly suggest trying it out and leave me replies and comments and let me know because I know for a fact myself I have seen a lot of changes in the readings that I do and the responses in my cards, the feelings, um, by working energy in this kind of way, and by bringing myself into a better alignment, more conscious place um, and space when I go to do readings, especially specifically like a spiritual divination, shadow reading, right, where you're really... Um, 
accepting and coming into that sovereign space to do work for good to better yourself, right? You're really in a great place to do that kind of spiritual seeking. Um, so yeah, I hope the video has been helpful and enlightening. Um, if you're interested more in the topic of duality, totally check out my newest episode that will be coming out shortly on my YouTube and BitChute channels, um, which will be episode six of Comprehending Consciousness. Um, if in the meantime you're interested in finding more, you can find me at amoryspeaks.com or um, on Telegram at t.me amoryspeaks, where I share daily positivity tips and um, educational infographics, things like that. Um, so yeah, thanks again for listening. I hope you will try this out in your working with tarot. If you don't do tarot and you're interested in readings, uh, I totally offer them. You can check me out on my website or you can find me on Etsy at Spiritual Divination over there. And I do have um, pictures of all the spreads that I offer and pricing and stuff. But if you find me on my website after Etsy, that's better because I have coupons and deals and discounts on my website versus pricing on Etsy just because um, I don't have a lot of traffic over there and they, up, they make you pay just to be on there, you know? So if you choose to get a reading with me, totally just contact me. <laughs> Send me an email or find me on my website. Um, but you can see all the the spreads over there it's really convenient for showing that kind of information so if you're interested totally check it out over there <laughs> thanks so much again for joining me i hope you have a beautiful morning or evening wherever in the world you are and uh thank you for your service the collective until next time <laughs>